Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, John chapter 10, we're going to be in there again uh, today, uh, verse, verses 8, 9, and 10. I just thought we talked about the door. I thought Friday was a um, very enjoyable uh, lesson to go through. We're going to go into that in a little more detail. So verse 8, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, that there's only one way to heaven. And to say there's another way, uh, people will say, well, if you do this, or you do that, or you do this, or you keep that, whatever it might be, then uh, you can earn your way to heaven. Well, the Bible says something different. It says salvation is in a person. It's uh, to believe on him who he has sent, that it's belief in Jesus Christ, faith alone in Christ alone, and that's it. That's salvation. It's faith in a person. Faith in trusting what he did. Uh, it says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, that uh, it's through his righteousness we have fellowship with God, but you have to be in Christ. It's by trusting in Christ. But all others who say uh, you have to do this or do that or trust in religious works, or if they say it is Jesus plus that's a different Jesus than is presented in the Bible. If it's Jesus plus you have to do something, that's not salvation, okay? Because when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. That means paid in full. So a lot of times uh, Christians get caught up in thinking they have to uh, now be perfect. Uh, we'll get into that more as we go uh, in some upcoming uh lessons as we talk about those things but you're made perfect in christ when you put your trust in him you are what uh is called justified you are justified it's god sees you just as if you've never sinned uh, the issue that we have is what we call our sanctification sanctification will be a lifelong process you're not going to hit sinless perfection in this lifetime i hate to burst that bubble for you but that would be called glorification. And we're going to have that when we get our glorified bodies, when God uh, does that and he puts us in our glorified bodies where we will never sin again. Sin shall be no more. He'll uh, wipe away every tear. And when that happens, then uh, we will no longer have that desire, that urge to sin. Since you've been a Christian, you've probably found out, oh, I still have desires to sin. You need to work that out. You need to continue to be in prayer. You need to be in fellowship. You need to be reading God's word. And if you're not doing those things, uh, typically you're going to fall. And then uh, the Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1, 9. That, uh, Keep a short list of sins. Go to him right away. Confess it. Stay out of perpetual sin. Uh, but all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Well, you know what? They're saying there's another way. They're going to be, uh, they're going to end up dying in their sin as a thief, you know, and uh, they will. But they're saying that you can somehow steal what is God's and uh, only God could provide salvation. Going back to Genesis uh, Abraham uh, I prophesied well in saying God will provide himself a lamb when John came and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. There was the Lamb of God who came in Jesus Christ. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. <clears throat> well, um, if we are in Christ, he's our protector. He's the provider of salvation. Uh, the porter, the protector of the sheep gate would lie uh, at the uh, door of the sheep gate uh, to protect the sheep. He was there as a protector. You know, the Bible says if you're in Christ, no one can pluck you from his hand. Uh, you are eternally secure. You cannot lose your salvation. Uh, there are those that say, oh, you could lose your salvation. Salvation is something that uh, God gave you when you put your trust in him. Uh, for eternal life. And when you put your trust in him, uh, if you could lose it by some sin, 
then you would lose it every time you sinned. And uh, that would be a problem. You'd have to get saved over and over again. And Jesus died once for sin. So that's a false teaching. And I believe it comes from this idea of uh, from the Roman Catholic Church that would teach that there's some mortal sin that could cause you not to go to heaven. And um, first of all, uh, any sin is a mortal sin. If you've ever told a lie, that's a mortal sin. You deserve the death penalty. The Bible says, uh, Revelation 21, 8, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. That's part of that verse. It names many other sinners in that verse. If you want to look up Revelation 21, 8, but all liars deserve the lake of fire. Uh, so the point of the law is to drive us to the foot of the cross. Wherefore, the law is our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So the point of the law was not to justify. Uh, that's actually why the Jewish people missed it, because we uh, read in Romans 9, uh, 31 and 32, that they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Uh, be, wherefore? Because they sought it as if it were by the law, but not by faith. Okay, so it's by faith in Christ, faith in a Messiah that would one day come is the way they looked at it in the Old Testament. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Well, of course, uh, the thief, uh, the master thief, of course, is Satan. He uh, wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't want you to have uh, eternal life. He wants you to, if you are a Christian, he wants you to doubt your salvation. He wants you uh, to live a non-abundant life. And that doesn't mean a life of much uh, money and wealth and that you're going to be this philanthropist giving everybody things. It means you're going to have a life of joy, a life knowing that you're saved and he wants to uh, cripple you in any way that he can to make you have a uh, dim light or a light that is uh, not shining uh, so that you're not able to work uh, for the Lord. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. But once we've come to faith, now we can actually please him and we do things uh, for him because we've come to faith in Christ. But he's the one who provided salvation. So a lot of people confuse uh, verses that uh, talk about reward with verses that talk about salvation. So <clears throat> Genesis 6, 16 said, a window shalt thou make to the ark and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it. Many times uh, Jesus had, uh, there were pictures of Jesus in the old Testament that God used uh, to show us. So here we've got a picture. There was one, door to the ark. So in the same, uh, Jesus, of course, in this passage that we're talking about in John, it's a metaphor. He's not literally the door, but it's showing us a spiritual meaning in this. And the same thing is true of this picture in the old Testament. There was one door in the ark and in Genesis seven sixteen, it says, and they went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. in. So the Lord shut the door. You know, and there was a point where the door was shut and now anyone outside of the ark, they were going to die. Okay. And they were not going to uh, continue. They were, they were going in judgment because God sent the judgment of the flood on the whole world. And I think it's getting, things are getting worse and worse. And it's more and more where people are uh, doing the things like in the days of Noah, uh, that they're doing what is right in their own eyes. Now, Revelation 3, 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept thy word and has not denied my name. So be encouraged because we are in a day where God's given us an open door. Be bold with your faith. Talk to people. Uh, that open door he set before us, uh, we have Jesus Christ. We have the truth. So no man can take away from the truth. So many times we think we need to uh, justify things away from the Bible. But the Bible says that if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? So people want to get in a debate and say, well, okay, let's debate about evolution. But you can't use God. Um, no, I'm not going to agree to that. I'm going to use God because that's where my worldview is. Uh, you want to not use God? Uh, so be it. Uh, that's where your worldview is. I understand we have conflicting worldviews, 
but don't compromise with them. Just use God, use the Bible. It doesn't matter if they don't believe it, you have the truth. So what are you standing on? What's your foundation? If you're going to say, okay, I won't use God, then you just gave up your whole foundation and you're not standing on anything. So don't do that. You have the open door. Don't deny Jesus' name. Don't deny that his word is truth. You keep to his word. You stand on his word. If you've done that in the past, past ask God to forgive you and say, you know what? I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to go straight forward and know this is truth. It's the reason we want to memorize scripture. We want to have scripture on the tip of our tongue. Now, Genesis 4, 7 and Revelation 4, 1. I bring up these two just to bookend this and close it. Uh, the first time the word door is mentioned in the Old Testament is, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. He was talking to Cain. You know, well, how can we do well? We do well by doing what God asks, and that's to believe on him who he has sent. See, God accepted Abel's, Abel's sacrifice. He accepted it when, um, because it was a sacrifice that came with blood. And the sacrifice of blood of an animal was to point to Jesus. God had rules. He didn't accept Cain's sacrifice because it was a sacrifice that didn't involve blood. So it wasn't pointing to the Messiah and he didn't do what was right. It wasn't because Abel was saved by uh, works. It was because he was believing in the Messiah who would come. So he did what was asked. Why do we go and get baptized once we're saved? It's not because baptism saved, saves, it's because we have believed on the Messiah. So why in the Old Testament did they do a blood sacrifice at any time? Because they had believed on the Messiah and they were doing that uh, prescription as part of their sanctification. Because the blood of bulls and goats, that could never take away sin. It was only the blood of Jesus Christ that could. Now it's interesting though, the verse, first verse in the Bible that talks about the door is one sin lieth at the door. Well, if you're not going to step through the door, you're going to die in your sin, really. But Revelation 4.1 says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. This is the, referring to the rapture. When we get to Revelation 4, uh, that is the rapture of the church, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. If you're in Christ, he's going to take you in the rapture. Uh, whether you at that time maybe are caught in a sin or not, there's a lot of false teachings. If you have put your trust in Christ, you're going to go. If you're in a sin, you need to repent. You need to get uh, restore that fellowship with the Lord. Uh, don't sit out of fellowship with God for some long period of time. Come to him with a soft heart. But uh, I believe we'll close that with, uh, for today. Let's uh, just think about and ponder about Jesus is the door. Have we stepped through that door or have we uh, thought about just standing outside? Sin lieth at the door. We haven't actually stepped through. And if we have, then that door is open in heaven. But one day when that rapture happens, that door, that age of grace, salvation is still going to be through Jesus Christ. But that age of grace, that day, that door is going to be closed once again. And judgment's going to come upon the whole world in the time of the tribulation. We'll end there for today. May the Lord bless you today.